As we've seen in the first video of this miniseries, AI models can now create convincing music, an incredible step forward. But there is something that to me is even more incredible, how little sense most music experts make when they discuss this new advancement. In this video, I want to look at four main criticisms, to discuss their merits and flaws with you, and to find a deeper meaning behind the frankly irrational attitude from these critics. Hello Top Potters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and an nerd for telling it as it is. Here's a warning then, this is not a witch hunt to lampoon people. This is a discussion of ideas aimed at improving our understanding of a new situation. I'm dying to hear your ideas in the comments section, but keep the tone of the conversation civil. Or else… Imagine seeing a dog parking a car. You'd probably go, wow, this is amazing. Instead, I hear music pros going like, hmm, it's using the clutch too much. Anyone could park a super mini. Could Dougie do that with a limousine? Unimpressed at best. Talking about music generated by AIs, they initially focused on technical problems. And there are problems. Harmonies are sometimes not too well connected. Melodies tend not to be terribly memorable. AI tech teams are surely working on these things, but with the release of the new AI models, these issues have become smaller and infrequent. Most listeners don't even register them. So the focus of the critics has shifted to more compelling issues. For some subgenres, music generated by AIs is not authentic enough. Seriously, framing the discussion on AI around authenticity is a huge mistake. For a start, it puts AI compositions in the same ballpark as human-made pieces. That alone is a testament of the incredible advancement we're facing. But there's more. Remember the song I created in this series first video? Buds in the field grow it all so fine. Mashed or fried, they'll never let you down. Potato paradise. I had asked for 1920s jazz and I was given a song that is not Dixieland. But so what? AIs are not humans. They look at pieces uploaded in their databases. They find patterns. They learn to compose using those patterns. See, maybe right now these databases don't cover that many music genres, but once you get an AI model that can compose, say, decent pop songs, you change the music in the database and voila! Now you can get Mongolian folk tunes pronto! It's not like you have to rebuild the whole thing from scratch. So let's shift focus once again. Okay, AIs can or will be able to create good music, but they cannot innovate! You need to be a human with soul and genius to do that! Too bad it's not true. Ask yourself, what's innovation? We take a blues. I went to the we add distortion to the guitar, get a heavier sound. We just created hard rock. Innovation is the application of something that already exists, distortion, in a new context. I can't see why AIs can't be used to randomly generate innovations mixing different musical elements with a click or two of your mouse. Out of a multitude of awful results, a couple are bound to be alright. Even interesting. Am I missing something here? If I am, the comment section is down here, just below that like button that you're gonna hit 
if I gave you food for thought. You might even get extra content by subscribing to my Telegram channel. Please? Okay, let's move to the really juicy bit. Let's try something. I'll ask Suno to create a piece sounding like Abba's Dancing Queen, a song that is easy to single out with a generic prompt, one that doesn't name Abba or Dancing Queen. Let's see. How is this possible? As we said, AIs are trained on millions of files containing meaningful examples, in our case, existing songs. But if AI gives us music that is painfully similar to copyrighted material, shouldn't the developers be sued for copyright infringement? AI's companies are already seeking a ruling putting the use of copyrighted songs to train their software into fair use territory. In other words, while AI-generated songs might include bits and bobs of existing songs, they are not exact copies, and using that material as a basis to create something else would not affect the market value of the originals. Having watched the first video of this series, you know that that's at least debatable. Even if AI companies lose this battle, they already have an alternative. They can start doing what Adobe has already done with art for its Firefly AI, acquire music from professionals and use it to train their AI models. After spending tens of millions to develop and run this technology on the verge of monetizing the whole operation, this would just be a minor annoyance. There's a reason why this criticism of AI falls painfully short. People are hoping that raising all sorts of objections will make this AI nightmare go away. Sorry guys, too late for that. We could have acted 10 years ago, but are collecting laughing at the idea that a piece of software could do our work has stopped us from speaking when it mattered. Now, AI is going to stay which, depending on us, can be either a blessing or a curse. After all, these can be incredible and empowering tools that can enrich the whole human experience, if we decide to fight the right battle this time around, that is. Wait, which battle? You can find that out in the video concluding this miniseries. This was Simon Mas. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye!